Hello friends. Today I am going to explain you about uh, various options that are present as part of uh, the policy. So policy is a reusable object and uh, policy once created can be associated anywhere uh, the anywhere with the top level services that exist in the data power. So as we know there are five top level services and uh, they are web services proxy primarily and multi-protocol gateway xml firewall web application firewall and uh, of course the access and access data so uh, once you create a policy uh, that policy can be attached in uh, any of these uh, top level services uh, in order to work for you the purpose of a policy is to provide processing rules uh, within uh, your application within your top level application so uh, if you want to do some kind of customized processing on uh, request and response messages then uh, the policy is the place uh, which you need to where you need to configure most of your options and uh, based upon your options it will uh, it will process your income and outgoing messages <coughs> now uh, i have explained uh, how to configure a policy in my earlier video and in this video I'm going to explain you about uh, uh, what are the options possible uh, when we are configuring a policy so uh, let's get started over here uh, <coughs> we are on a screen which shows uh, uh, a multi protocol gateway policy and uh, you can see your options uh, your configuration option uh, here uh, where I am right, uh, right now placing my mouse so uh, <coughs> I will explain you about uh, uh, these options in brief and so that you understand what these are and uh, how to uh, configure them. So uh, let's say, uh, let's start with filter. Filter is an option uh, which allows you to filter your request as the name suggests, but what to filter? So uh, for example, if you have a message and you want to uh, filter it so that uh, uh, you protect yourself from SQL injection then filter is the place to go so if you uh, if you place it here and uh, if you double click it its configuration window opens right so you can see the uh, screen now uh, if you go ahead and check the uh, style sheet, uh, you can see, uh, you can have, give me a moment, I am saying store and uh, I am checking store. And I have a style sheet which says uh, SQL injection filter. So, uh, if I configure this in this way, uh, what it will do is that uh, when a message, when a request or response comes to, uh, uh, to the data power and suppose this rule is hit, it will first check for the SQL injection. So, data power has built in support for SQL injection. Now, uh, you can extend this support of course and you can have your own style sheet uh, uh, specified over here. Uh, which does uh, uh, entire which which may do entirely different thing than the name uh, filter suggests. For example, uh, it may uh, happen uh, HTTP header on the overall request, but that is something that you should not do uh, in the filter uh, action. Filter is something uh, which says that I want to filter uh, something uh, from uh, the request. So a SQL injection is something uh, which we can check over here. And uh, there are other actions as well. Uh, you can see virus, uh, uh, virus protection act option is always uh, there uh, for you. So uh, these are some of the things that we can do uh, with the filter. Uh, the connection seems to be a little bit slow, so I am closing this and uh, I am removing this because I do not want to modify my existing policies. Now, second thing is sign. As the name suggests. Uh, sign is an action which allows you to uh, appropriately sign the incoming message request or response so when I say incoming message I mean uh, uh, the rules can be applied for both uh, incoming as well as uh, incoming message from a client as well as incoming message from a backend server 
so uh, the direction can be both so sign action can be utilized to sign the message now this action is typically useful and its configuration options are typically exhaustive but the two thing that you need to sign a message is the only thing that you need to sign a message is for that matter uh, a private key and uh, if you look at the if you look at the options that are available with sign message uh, it can you can see that uh, although options uh, looks uh, pretty much exhaustive but uh, at the core if you specify the private key by which signature needs to be put it will put that uh, signature in the message and then uh, move ahead options uh, may also look con uh, also look uh, typically complex because uh, data power has a support to sign any part of the message so it's not like that uh, you can sign the overall message you can sign uh, any particular part of that message as well so that kind of support is built in and because of that options looks complex uh, but signature does what that that kind of thing only so you can say that how a signature is configured and uh, you see that ultimately you will have to provide the uh, key the private key that you need th th that must be there in order to sign a, a, a message so this is uh, what sign is now uh, let me uh, delete it as well now there is verify option verify is uh, basically there to verify digital signature and this is particularly useful when you are doing a b2b transaction so uh, consider the scenario in which uh, uh, you are getting some document you are integrating with your vendor and you are getting some document over the internet the first thing that you need to do is to verify uh, whether the signature on that document is correct or not so that uh, uh, appropriate uh, actions can be taken further so this action will provide this verify option will uh, give you uh, a place where you can configure and you can verify the uh, the signature that is present on the message another is validate hmm, i forgot it so what it does uh, let me see what it does So, I believe uh, the options that are available here says that uh, the validate option is mainly val for validating uh, documents uh, uh, with respect to a schema. So, for example, uh, if I can envision a use case over here is that uh, let us suppose that uh, you, are, you are getting a SOAP document, uh, uh, you are getting a SOAP document. And now you want to validate whether this SOAP document is valid against the schema or not. So uh, you can specify options over here and uh, you can validate a SOAP document with a particular uh, schema so that uh, if validation is complete then next action will happen or things will, uh, things will be stopped. Now SOAP uh, a document is just one example the document can be any valid XML document so uh, that is not uh, something which is restricted so that's how the validate action uh, works now after validate action we have encrypt and decrypt these are two typically two advanced uh, level processing concepts uh, the name typically suggests uh, what they do so encrypt means they will encrypt the message and decrypt means they will decrypt the message but the only thing to remember here is that data power is able to encrypt and decrypt not the whole message but any part of it so for example uh, if you have a xml document and uh, in that xml document there are 10 attributes uh, related to a person for example but you want to encrypt certain part of it for example date of birth ssn number and uh, the bank account number you want to encrypt only that part of it that you can achieve with encrypt function you have to uh, you have to provide appropriate options and then encrypt will encrypt that similar is the case with a decrypt decrypt works on whole document as well as part of it so you can decrypt the whole document as well as uh, any of the attributes or any of the specific tags that exist inside that document 
So this is decrypt option. Transform is typically a, uh, a most commonly used options. So as I said earlier, inside the filter, uh, if, if you choose the filter option, it provides you the flexibility of providing your style sheet that you can mention and that style sheet will be invoked when a message comes to it. Filter options uh, mostly used for, for example, uh, filtering uh, incoming message uh, based on some criteria like uh, filtering for SQL injection, filtering for virus attachments, etc., etc. Transform is the general place where uh, you provide your custom style sheet so that custom processing can happen over your message. For example, uh, let's say that uh, uh, a message came to your uh, uh, came to your object and uh, you want to add some header, uh, uh, some HTTP header on top of that. You want to remove some HTTP header on top of that or, 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 or you want to remove some part of the message on, on top of that or uh, for example, uh, you, want, uh, you want to enrich the message. Uh, so when a message comes to, uh, to you, uh, you want based on some criteria you want to connect to a database get to get some more information put that information inside the incoming message so that that message gets enriched and put it back and then send it over to the backend server these all kinds of things can uh, can be done using transform action and uh, you need to provide appropriate uh, uh, appropriate uh, style sheet for that so transform action is uh, there now route Route option uh, gives you the flexibility that based on some criteria, your message can be routed on uh, backend server A or backend server B. So that is what route option is over there. Triple A action. This is uh, the heart and soul of uh, uh, data power authentication policy. So uh, a triple A option provides you the flexibility that. Uh, uh, you can configure authentication, authorization and auditing policy of the uh, data power. So whenever a message comes to you, uh, comes to this uh, uh, particular object and suppose the rule is hit, uh, you, will, uh, you will examine that message from AAA perspective. AAA is pretty much advanced topic and uh, needs uh, explanation in its own. I have tried to capture uh, how AAA policies work in data power in uh, my earlier video so you can have a look at it and if you have questions uh, you are welcome to post here uh, AAA policies are uh, for, for those purposes now one another is the results so consider this uh, what is this result now that you have done a lot of processing on the uh, on your incoming your outgoing messages and uh, uh, you have enriched it or you have filtered it or you have done blah 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 kind of thing uh, to this uh, to your message now it's time to uh, send your message to appropriate destination now that destination can be anything uh, that destination can be a file system on the data power or your backend server or uh, just a eco reply to your client so such kind of uh, such kind of uh, 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 routing or not routing such kind of uh, dumping the results is uh, achieved using the uh, results uh, action so uh, it is it is typically a customary thing that you place results uh, option to to the end of the rule so that uh, uh, <coughs> your requests are uh, put to your backend server or eco replied based upon your context so you can see i have configured many different rules and there are a lot of rules over here but uh, i have uh, just selected uh, the uh, the results action at the end of the everyone this uh, ensures that uh, my requests are uh, processed appropriately and wherever they need to go they are going successfully in this case the request is going to the server if I have to put something on the data power appliance itself for example uh, uh, let's suppose that I have enriched the message and I wanted to dump the whole XML file on the uh, data power appliance file system itself I would have gone for the results uh, option and there is an option to uh, put the file on the data power itself so this is uh, all now, uh, if you look at this, if you look at this uh, whole uh, rule, 
client to server root you can see there is one more icon and there are actually two icons which are not present here here they are this icon and they are this icon so this icon says that uh, you, you you are configuring a match room so you have a policy policy is a top level object this is the policy routing rules policy and uh, the a, a policy is composed of rules these are the rules you can see these are the rules here 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 so these are the rules so a policy is composed of rule uh, whenever uh, whenever a top level data power object for example multi protocol gateway object receives an, uh, receives a message uh, if everything is right policy is hit so router use policy will be activated now how uh, inside a policy there are several rules how among these one particular rule is picked up that is picked up because of the batch expression the batch expression specifies what is the criteria for activating this particular rule so that is uh, configured in the batch it's uh, uh, it has several options for configuring and uh, i believe uh, in one of my earlier videos i have uh, explained uh, match in a little bit uh, detail how to configure the match action now this action is not over here and this action is related to this advanced action so if you click if you uh, select this advanced option and let me double click it it will take a while to open yeah so uh, once you once you try to configure the advanced option it has a pretty much a lot of options that you can uh, explore it can check for antivirus it can call your processing rule uh, it can work on conditional uh, routing so, so convert query parameters to XML so this is the option which we have selected over here convert query parameters to XML here yeah, yeah. give me a moment yeah this action this is what convert query parameters to XML and uh, this action basically does what so uh, let's say that uh, you are posting a J security form and uh, you have parameters associated with it so uh, this action will convert that that query parameter into an xml format so j security form is just an example uh, it can convert any query parameters into an xml format for that matter so uh, this is the action that is uh, present over there and uh, <coughs> advance is typically uh, uh, as the name suggests is an advanced processing policy and it has a lot of flexibility in configuring various options so you can achieve uh, that you can achieve with that and uh, transform binary is something that uh, wherein a binary message is transformed into an XML format and the transform message is uh, transform is something similar to what uh, our uh, earlier policy which was like uh, uh, this one uh, yeah transform so it is both both are same they allow you to configure your custom style sheet so that uh, you can have a customized processing on the uh, messages so advanced option typically provides uh, most of the options that you have seen over here plus other options as well so you can uh, configure them and then uh, your processing will take place accordingly so that's how uh, that's how uh, policies uh, work in the data power and I have tried to briefly explain each of them uh, what is their role and typical use cases uh, in uh, data power policy uh, world. So that's all for this video and thanks for watching. This is Atitan.